Let's launch the Nexus by double-clicking on the desktop icon. The number displayed here indicates which version we are using. Using the latest version released is highly recommended. When we start Genexus, we see this interface, which is called Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. It's divided into windows, toolbars, and a main menu. The on-screen position of these windows and toolbars is completely customizable. For example, we can change the position of a toolbar, or hide a window, and show it again using this menu option. We can also control docking behavior by clicking on the pin button. We could also fix them in one position, or arrange them differently on screen. This is the start page. This page allows us to start working from an example, start a training session, or open a sample application that has already been developed. To start developing a new Genexus application, we create a knowledge base. A knowledge base is a project, so to create a new project in Genexus, we create a KB. Note that the start page gives the option to create a new knowledge base or open an existing one. We can also create a new knowledge base by selecting the File, New, Knowledge Base options in this menu bar. We select this option and the following dialog box is displayed. Here we enter a name for the knowledge base that will be created. Since we will be developing a sample application for a travel agency, the knowledge base will be called Travel Agency. Here we indicate the folder in which the knowledge base will be created. It'll be saved in C in the KB Travel Agency folder. If we were using the full version of Genexus, the window would look like this, where the prototyping target combo box allows selecting local prototyping or prototyping in the Genexus cloud. In the Prototyping Environment combo box, it's necessary to select one of the programming languages available. The language selected will be used by Genexus to generate the programs corresponding to the application, and the programs to create and maintain the database. For the front end, .NET is used, and it's possible to select some of these other options to generate the customer-facing part, or a mobile application. In the Data Source combo, you can select the DBMS. When using the trial version, we don't have the option to choose the environment, the prototyping method, or the data source because they're default options. The prototyping is done in the Genexus cloud. The environment is .NET, and the data source is SQL Server. Lastly, the language combo lets us select the language in which we want the application to be generated. That is to say, the language used by Genexus to generate button labels, messages, and so on. Once again, we will leave the default option, English. Now, before we create the knowledge base, let's take a quick look at the information displayed by Genexus. It shows the folder in which the knowledge base will be created, and the last two lines in particular describe the database that will store the knowledge base data. It should be pointed out that it isn't our application database. This database will store data related to the settings made in our knowledge base. So now we click on the Create button. And the knowledge base creation process now begins. Note that some of the IDE's contents have changed. For example, in the KB Explorer window, a tree structure has been created. Its root is the name of the knowledge base that we've just created, and below it are some nodes that we will talk about later.